The address looks good. How can I assist you with your order? What pizzas or items would you like to order? I'm not sure. What options do I have? We have a great selection of pizzas. Here are some popular options. Classic pizzas. Margarita, $10.99. Pepperoni Passion, £12.99. Signature pizzas. Ordinary Special. Vegetarian options. Veggie Supreme, £11.99. Mediterranean Delight, £14.99. Would you like to go with any of these pizzas or know more about our menu? Yeah, sure. Let's do... Uh... No problem. Take your time. Which pizza would you like to choose? Um, let's do... Um... Mm. Take your time, Abhijit. Got it? 123 London Road, E85DP. Now, what pizzas would you like to order? What options do I have? We have a variety of classic and signature pizzas. Here are some popular ones. Classic pizzas. Margarita, $10.99. Pepperoni Passion, $12.99. Signature pizzas. No Ordinary Special, $15.99. Veggie Supreme, $11.99. Mediterranean Delight, $14.99. You can mix and match. What would you like to order? Um, let's order... Um, maybe... Um, the Supreme Pizza? Great choice. Would you like any sides or drinks with your Veggie Supreme Pizza? Hey, you have seen both the AI agents in action. Now, I want you to pause the video and think why the second agent was much more premium than the first one. And then let me know the reason in the comments. Yeah, I'll wait for you. So please pause the video and think. Now, if your answer was that the second agent was smart enough to understand the conversation context, to not interrupt the user when he was thinking or deciding about choosing the pizza, then I must congratulate you that your thinking was right. So far, everyone was actually trying to make the AI agent stop and have interrupt when the user was speaking, but you, that was not enough, right? The agent must be understanding the conversation context and otherwise it just makes it a robot, right? It is not an intelligent robot, right? So when it can understand the conversation context and based on that it responds um, then that makes an AI agent more premium and more production ready just think about this let's say you are creating an AI agent which is for maybe some kind of therapy as a therapy specialist AI agent if it talks and keeps on interrupt uh, the user while he is thinking or maybe uh, that that patient is thinking about some of his trauma then that's not how you want to design your ai therapy agent right so you need to have the ai agent have the proper understanding the empathy where it needs to stop let the uh, patient or let the user think about whatever question that he has been asked uh, or kind of spill out whatever he is thinking to actual help with the trauma that the user is having right now again while i took this example this might not be the proper use case you want to implement or I am recommending you to implement. But all I am saying is that when you give an AI agent that contextual understanding of the conversation and based on that, if it responds, it feels like more human, right? For example, when you call a customer care center and they have asked you a question and you are taking time, they don't bother you and keep on telling you, hey, keep your time or hey, are you ready or something like that, right? They don't bother you. So when you make an AI agent system like that, it makes it feels really premium and it makes it really feel more like humanoid agent, right? So this kind of small difference when the AI agent was responding not being intrusive when the user is thinking by having a little understanding of the conversation context makes your AI agent much more premium, much more expensive than the rest of the AI agents uh, that is available out in the market. And this is what I am trying to build as part of my SaaS course that I've already pre-launched to make it more production ready, sensitive to human interactions, and also keeping it most budget friendly multimodal AI agent 
that you can ever build for your business or as an AI agency. Now, I don't have enough words to convince you to take my course where I discuss all of these features with uh, the existing SaaS masterminds. All I can say to you is that the course is still in the pre-launch phase as I'm still into that mid and early stage of developments and design. And so that is why the course is still at its best price that you can get ever. And I can promise you, you wouldn't find another course in the whole internet that will guide you through all of these features while actually building a real life SaaS application and share you the end-to-end -end journey with you as well. But yeah, enough of my advertisements here. Let's talk about how we have achieved this feature, shall we? So now I have shared my screen and remember what I'm about to discuss. This is really state of the art thing. So this is really very, very new. And as you can see, this blog has only came out about December 20, which is like just yesterday. And this, of course, we have achieved this using LiveKit and LiveKit is so far one of my favorite tool to create AI agents. And I have already covered in great depth and details about how to create an AI agent using LiveKit, which is also budget-friendly options for you to create um, AI agent, leaving all those open AIs, real-time API and everything, which is really, really costly. Now, what they have able to do, do is now they have created something called EOU. And I'm gonna talk about that in more details just in just a few minutes. So before that, let me actually tell you how we were actually doing the end of turn detection so far. So end of turn detection is basically whenever a user starts speaking, let's say the agent is speaking and in the middle user started speaking something, then the agent would stop. So this is like end of turn detection. That means uh, whenever user started speaking, agents would know that it is end of turn. So how it is today happen is using a technology called VAD or voice activity detector. Now, what happens actually in voice activity detect, it's basically uh, whenever the user speaks or the agent is speaking, that actually goes through something called a neural net. And then whenever the audio contains human speech, there is an algorithm which actually helps the agent to understand if there is a human speech there. If there is a human speech, it would immediately stop talking. It would immediately stop um, doing the text-to-speech um, uh, streaming, basically, right? So... That is what VAD is, and that is the only technology that has been powering a lot of this AI agent that is coming today, even the Gemini one, right? So that's what they said, that uh, agents use Celero VAD. So Celero is a library uh, using which they, we used using this VAD. So Celero was a library, and uh, using the VAD technique, we used to interrupt the agent as and when human is speaking so far. Now, one of the problem with this technique is sometimes user might have to stop speaking when they are thinking. For example, you are in an interview and you have created an interview agent. Now, the interview agent have asked some qu question, let's say, and the interviewee could just uh, stop for a moment and start thinking about it. Now, the AI agent should be able to understand the context of the conversation and stop whenever it is, re it is required rather than just keep on asking the interviewee about, hey, what's your answer or something like that, right? So this is really important. So this is more human-oriented behavior. And that is why I call it humanoid AI agent. So whenever you want, you can have this kind of feature in the AI agent that it will talk almost like humans. Now, the way they have achieved this is very cheeky way. It's very simple way. And they have actually shown a really great uh, examples. So they created a very fine-tuned transformer model called small LM V2. And this is also open source model. So you can have it in you know, and see it in the hugging face. And it is also a CPU based model. So that means you can run this model in CPU. It's about around 200 MB in size model uh, with all the weights and everything. Maximum, it will take 500 MB of your RAM when the, the model will run in your local system. Uh, but what it is doing is basically now they have created a, some, a class, I would say, or a Python, um, uh, Python module that is called end of utterance. So this end of utterance uh, model is basically it will use this model and when user is speaking, right, what they are doing, they are sending the, the speech to this particular model and the model will say, yes, the user's user's turn is ended so that the agent can speak. So that that is what they have done. It's a very uh, interesting and intelligent way to do it. And they say that it reduces unintentional interruption by 85%. 
and falsely indicates that the turn is not over three percent of the time actually i can show you uh, the quick demo that they have shown let's see that LiveKit's open source turn detection model gives your agents a human-like ability to know when to respond. In the past, most models have used some kind of voice activity detection as a sign that it's their turn to speak, but this isn't how people have natural conversations. The content of your speech is just as important as the sound. Using our open source model, the agent will only request a response from the LLM when it knows that you're actually done speaking. That's what I was saying, right? So the agent really need to have that conversational context to make it more realistic response. So let's see it in action. I've got two agents here. First, we're going to use a legacy agent that does its best to naively guess when you're done speaking using voice activity. And the second one uses our model. Hi, can you interview me about a time when I built a demo? Tell me about a time when you built a demo. Sure. I was building a demo to try and show the benefits the of artificial intelligence and customer support machine two, learning model to my client. Two different scenarios. Um, one being... So let me uh, fast forward the videos. You can understand, right, what I was trying to say. And this is exactly what we have also shown in our demo. So let's go there and see the new one. Hi there. Can you interview me about a time when I built a demo? That sounds great. Tell me about a time when you built a demo. Sure. So I wanted to show the difference, like like between um, two different two different approaches, one being turn detection using VAD, and then the other one being uh, turn Yeah, so as you can see, this is what I was actually talking. Now, what I have done is they have given a small code reference somewhere as well. So this one. So what I have done is I have started working on it yesterday till like late midnight. And then I was able to create this particular agent, the humanoid agent. And I think this uh, code will be available into the repository that I've already shared hopefully previously. But anyway, I will let us the link for you to check out. Uh, so when you check out the link uh, for this code, you will be able to actually, you should be going into the repository and search for this humanoid agent folder. And under that, you will see two files. One is the ordinary AI agent and another is the humanoid AI agent to actually um, check the difference. Uh, just to show you very quickly what I have done is uh, I have kind of downloaded that model that uh, from the hugging face. Uh, and then I've used, this, used that model using this turn detector module. And this is the new module that the, or new options that they have added into the voice pipeline agent. And that's it. I haven't had to do anything else. Uh, but I am not covering this code uh, deep dive in much detail in this video. And I'll tell you the reason. The reason is because even if you get access to the code now, you won't be probably able to run it. Uh, but yeah, you can give it a try. And the reason was because until yesterday when I was trying to run this and test this, it, it was not working properly because I believe they had to update a, a bunch of their agents like the voice pipeline agent and everything, which was kind of uh, hard coded to use the Celero VAD, um, of course. So they had to change uh, a bit there. And so I tried a lot of different things since yesterday night, even I kind of uh, at around if you see 2 13 a.m i actually po post this into their community in, in the slack group that hey i think uh, i have seen that a uh, bunch of their github actions were failing so as a result the live kit agent versions and everything was not updated although their code says that we should use these versions like we should use live kit version more than 0.12.3 uh, although in the Python library, like if, you, if I open the Python library quickly for you, LiveKit agents, and if you see that uh, this is like 0 0.12.3, but it was only updated 17 hours ago. This is uh, literally after I have uh, asked them that this, this is the problem, your, your GitHub actions are failing. So I had to do a lot of work around uh, to run this uh, demo. Uh, literally, I had to take their main branch of code, compile it and run it, which I really don't want to show you and uh, I would recommend you to do it. So now that they have published this new Python modules, I'm going to retest it with the latest module and see if it is seamless to run the demo. If it is seamless to run the demo, I'll probably create another video and do a bit more coding deep dive there and a bit more deep dive about how to run it.
But regardless, now as they have released the libraries, uh, which is again after I have already sorted out the issue in my own Python environment by creating some custom models and custom code, uh, which I don't really want you to go through because uh, that will be really overkill as they have already, um, you know, working on it to fix it. So let's give it a day or two. Uh, hopefully, uh, I think all of their models will be updated uh, because this has just came in yesterday. So yeah, that's why I would uh, recommend you to subscribe to the channel because this is what I cover in this channel, different business use cases and proper state of the art, you know, AI agent setup. Uh, and yeah, again, if you want to join the course, this is the perfect time. This is the best time and this is the cheapest price that you will get. So please consider join the course if you are serious enough to create an AI agent or create an AI agent SaaS or even if you want to create AI agent for your business. So that, that's it for this particular video. I'm not going to take any more time. I'm going to close this video. So please take care, subscribe to the channel again. And if you find some value in this, give it a like and I'll see you on to the next one. Bye.